get in there. It's not going in. Why aren't you going in? Hello, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know. I'm super glad to be here. This vehicle we're climbing into is a 2007 Doge Grand Caravan with 206,427 miles on the odometer. Customer states clicking noise from front end while driving. So what we're going to need to do here is uh, go drive it, recreate said clicking noise. Why is there a red oil life indicator indicated? Uh, hang on a minute here. We're not driving anywhere. Let me pull this into the shop real quick and make sure it's got oil in it. And then uh, if it does, we'll go try to replicate that clicking noise. Or if it does not, I'll put oil in it. Then we'll go try to drive it and uh, replicate that clicking noise. It does not sound like it has no oil pressure. It doesn't sound great, but it does not sound like it has no oil pressure. So maybe that's a false light, bad sensor, some of that nature, powering down. Pew. Let's see what's going on with this unit. Poppin' Z hood. Come here. All right, Doge Crama Van. Do you have oil in you or? It's a dealio here. Where's your lever? There it is. All right, we've got the 3.8 liter V6 engine in this uh, particular vehicle. Let's see what we've got for engine oil here. And the dipstick says we have oil. It's in the safe zone. That's okay. Uh, what is this? There's a wire for the connector and it's not connected. I wonder if this goes to the oil pressure sender. Where's the sender? And why is it sitting on top of the EGR? So many questions. Okay, well, that's a one wire connector and I believe that's for the pressure sending unit. We know it has oil in it, so let's go out and hit the road real quick. We're going to quick test drive and see if uh, we cannot duplicate that clicking noise from uh, under the front suspension. Restarting the engine. Let's get out of here. Unfortunately, I must commit the cardinal sin of driving a customer's vehicle. I had to move the seat back. It was necessary. Open says me. And we're off. I always like the shifters in these Dodge vans. They they rotate as they come back. I don't know, it's just me. Okay, let's try to do some maneuvering in the parking lot here. Let's see if we can't figure out the sound. There is a lot of vibrations going on. It's got a bad motor mount or something. Let's give this thing a turn. Oh yeah, I hear it. Lots of clicking noises. Okay. All right, well that was fast. I think I've heard enough. Uh, back to the service stall we go. We don't have to go very far. I have duplicated the customer's concern. Let's get this thing up on a lift. Close, says me. Okay, let's get this thing up onto the lift and we'll give it a visual undercarriage inspection. We'll check on those motor mounts too while we're there. Uh, I'm gonna check the uh, suspension. I think we have an axle issue. That's what it sounds like. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Yeah. Here's our brake rotor. There was our brake rotor. All right, right about there. Lift arm or slash post is at the driver, that center of gravity. I think we're good. Parks the auto, power down, and we'll get this thing up in the air. Okie dokes, lift arms are set, both sides. Black subscribe button, Ram a van moving on up. And all the way up. Yeah, right about there is good. On the locks, lock pickages. Okay, let's go ahead and get that uh, front wheel off right there. I believe that was the suspected noisy clicking area. Where's my 19? All right, let's see what we can do about getting these nuts off here. Uh, one thing we need to notice is these are chrome capped uh, acorn style nuts, and two of them are missing the chrome cap. So although those are a 19 mil, these ones are actually now an 18 millimeter because the chrome has come off. It's like a two piece kind of deal or whatever. Get that back. 
This wheel's had some curb action before. See that? Some grindage. All right, so here's the 18. Fits over just perfectly. If you try a 19 on those, it will slip and it'll round that thing off, thus making it more difficult to remove. Yeah, you can see this one's been slipped a couple times. See right there? Yep, not okay. I mean, it, it works, but you gotta have the right size socket. All right, wheel, what do we got here? Brake pad looks good, rotor looks good. We got some grease in here and that's our winner 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 chicken dinner yeah that's it the uh the boot has torn and consequently contaminants have entered into the axle joint see in there yeah that's become contaminated due to exposure to the atmosphere it's going to need a uh replacement cv axle <coughs> definitely our clicking noise that's what it sounded like to me when we were driving it especially while uh while turning so i believe we need an axle let's go check the bottom out a little bit more in detail here i want to see if it has a broken engine mount okay oh i see what we're doing here okay so that wire up there is for the old pressure sender but it has been deleted and we looks like we have a manual pressure gauge in there. You see that hose? Yeah, that's, uh, that's been replaced with a manual style pressure gauge. This motor mounts junk, see that? That's a lot of our vibrations right there. See how the bolt is sitting down at the bottom of the mount? Yeah, we can see the stud that runs through. And yeah, that motor mount's wasted, okay. That's part of that issue. We got some leakage going on. Looks a lot like oil pan to me. I mean, there's a bunch leaking up there, but lots of saturation around this thing. That seal right there is leaking, that transmission seal. Okay, again, more oil pan, more stuff up top leaking. And we got a lot of leaks going here. I mean, for quarter million miles, I guess that's about right. Uh, if you can see way up there, it looks like there's a valve cover leak as well. Okay, it needs the pressure washer treatment. Probably has a rear main seal that leaks too. All right, well, our primary focus is that clicking noise. Let's check this axle real fast. Make sure we don't have to do two. That one looks good. Okay, motor mount check. Go ahead and start it, please. Thank you, darling. Okay, foot on the brake, put it in drive. Put it in reverse. Give it some gas. Or I'll do it. Never mind, I got it. I'll do it. That one's broke. That one's broke. We know the one down below is broke. How about the one in the back? That one's broke. Put it in forward. Okay, all motor mounts are broken. And I just heard a spark plug tick too. I got a spark jump. All right, you can shut her down. Thank you. Pew. All right, guys. Looks like we're good to go. We're gonna start uh, on this job with uh, this axle seal, uh, or axle and seal. Like I said, that was one of the primary things that they brought it in here for. So we're gonna go ahead and do what they wanted first, and uh, we're waiting to hear back on the motor mounts. And uh, there's also an issue with some lights out back. It's gonna need a, uh, uh, a tail lens assembly. Uh, I'm also waiting to hear back on that. So surveying the situation on how we're gonna get this disassembled. I know I've got to pull the uh, this axle nut and big cotter pin out of here. Uh, that's why I don't like to reuse cotter pins. See that? They break. You put them back and then they break. Or 
they break partially and then they're not capable of doing their job. So just change them, they're cheap. Get in there, car pen. It's got a little tang sticking out right here. It won't go past the hole. Okay. We will employ the side cut trick. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm trying to determine whether I want to take the uh, lower ball joint out and pull this assembly backwards to clear the axle, or if I want to take the tie rod off and remove these two bolts from the strut and then swing it out this way. I think I can get away with pulling these bolts out of the strut. Uh, what I'll do in order to prevent misalignment of the parts is I'll pull one of them out and we'll check it and we'll see if there's any play between the bolt hole on the knuckle and the bolt hole on the strut. If it's uh, if both holes line up solid with each other and there's no room for, uh, for error, we can just pull these top bolts out. Uh, what I'm getting at is I don't want to take the ball joint out. Okay, we've got another cotter pin lurking over here on this other side. That's for uh, our outer tie rod. Where are you? 19 millimeters. Pull that castle nut out. And I'll extract it from my socket. There. Now in order to remove this, uh, this tie rod and its stud from the knuckle, there's a couple ways we can go about that. We can hit it with a hammer as it is and flatten the threads and then damage them, which is no good. Or we can put the castle nut back on and then hit it with a hammer and maybe damage it, but probably not. Or we can use a puller or we can get it to break loose uh, with said hammer. I'm gonna choose the breaking it loose method. We're just gonna give this a couple taps and it's gonna shock this portion of the knuckle and that should release its grasp uh, on the stud for that, uh, that tie rod. Loud noises. Nothing crazy. It's a couple, couple good hits. There we go. Did that work? Negative. Let's thread our castle nut back on. This is uh, primarily to protect the threads. Right. Free. See that? Now the threads are just fine. Comes right back off. One more tap. We'll set that guy aside. Now looking up a little bit, let's pay attention to our two through bolts that secure the strut to the knuckle. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Got it. Yes, I can hammer on that bolt. You see how the threads meet the taper and they don't go all the way down? Unless I sideswipe that thing with a hammer and, and hit one of those threads, it's fine. I can do that. So anyway, taking a look at our bolt here. There's no wiggle room and no space, so it looks like we're clear to disconnect it right in that area, which is good. That's what I wanted to do. Now, this is all going according to plan unless this bottom bolt is slotted. Is it or isn't it? We're going to find out. Survey says that's it. Oh, look at that. It is slotted. Oh no. That makes this, uh, this horse a different color. That's not what I wanted to find in there. Come on out, Bolt. Seriously? Oh, no, turn him back now. We moved it. There. Okay. We're not totally screwed yet. It is slotted, but the strut is slotted, not the knuckle, okay? We're gonna get back to that later. I think this is gonna be all right because we can just use our witness marks to get it close. Uh, all transparency out there. Naturally, I'm gonna recommend a wheel alignment after this, but I believe we can get it so close it actually won't make any bit of a difference. That's unfortunate too. I totally thought we were gonna get away with uh, ruining my glove. Okay. Let's take out our little lock washer in there. Save that for later. Actually, that's not even a lock washer. That's just a regular washer. All right. Is that thing free? Nope. 
I know we'll break it loose with some pneumatic linear impacts. Slide right on out. There we go. Good. And I think definitely, yep, that's enough to get uh, to get this axle to come out of here. Words. Alrighty, let's raise this thing up and then we can get a pry bar on the back of that axle. Pop it out of there. Boom, back up. Back down below again, here's the inside joint on the CV axle. There's our transmission output uh, cone. There's our seal, you see a little red business on there. So what we need to do is get this axle out and uh, pop that seal out. That was easy, came right out, no problem. Okay, let's go ahead and squeeze this uh, axle out of here. Then we can get that seal removed. Come on, axle, you're coming with me. Go. Got it. There. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty nasty in that joint. Look at that. That's uh, it's not okay. Yep. A bunch of stuff binding, a lot of extra wear. It was making all kinds of noise, and it feels loose. Feel that rattle? Not any good. All right, I'm gonna give this seal puller one more shot. I, uh, I had used this puller before on, uh, on a Cadillac last week and it put a big scratch in the housing for the seal. Front row, I broke it more than, uh, than what I thought. Look at that. That seal remover put a couple nicks, three of them, put three nicks in the bore on that axle case. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. All right, well, no worries, I can fix that. We'll try it one more time. And if it, uh, if it does it again, I'm throwing it away. Now, it feels like I've got that hook off of the bore where the seal goes. So I don't think it's gonna touch it, but if it starts, yeah, see this, this is when it happens, right when it starts to break loose. I think that's when, that's when the scratch occurs. Let me reposition, maybe light pressure, there we go. Okay, ah, the spring came off. A little spring is supposed to sit inside. It keeps pressure uh, on that seal. If the spring is disconnected or weak or broken, then there won't be any pressure. Okay, let's squeeze in here a little bit. The towel, wipe that uh, inside surface clean. There we go, nice and shiny. And I've got a new seal here. That's our replacement unit. And I'm gonna try to use the seal driver kit. It's an Astro kit that I purchased and had mentioned back in the Cadillac video, but it, it wasn't gonna be suitable for the Cadillac. Uh, it's also supposed to be for races and uh, like bearing races and things like that. I usually just kind of run these in with a, a soft mallet, but you guys insist that I use a seal driver, so I'm gonna try it out. Well, it's not that you insist, but there's always someone who's like, Ree, you're supposed to use a driver on that. So I'll do the driver for that one guy. That one, that one person who says so. This one's for you. That's good. There we go. New seal installed. Okie doke. So I called up the O'Reilly's Auto Parts, and they sent me over a new CV axle shaft assembly. So what we're gonna do here, set this thing down next to our, our old unit, unpackage it, and compare it to make sure that it is the uh, the proper replacement. And by the way, not sponsored by uh, by O'Reilly's, but that's just uh, that's who I called, because that's who had the, uh, the shaft. And that's where I wanted to get the shaft. What's this say? Speed sensors must be removed before axle install. Okay. It's in three languages. Speed sensors must be removed. Why do speed sensors have to be removed? You mean this speed sensor? We have a discrepancy. We've got a gear drive on this axle for a speed sensor gear. That's what they're talking about. So I guess some of these transmissions would have had a, 
a speed sensor on that tail shaft and it would have been a, a gear driven sensor. And so they're saying to remove the sensor before installing. Which I guess you have to remove the sensor to remove the axle, so it doesn't really make much sense. Another slight discrepancy, there's this little shield right here. I think that can stay. See the splines, the threads, that all looks the same. Overall dimensions are the same. I, I think I can leave that little shield on. Let's take a look. Couldn't hurt, it's just gonna protect the bearing. Yeah, I'll try to leave it on. If it's a problem, I can knock it off with a chisel or something like that. And this right here, that little gear drive, that should not be a problem either because there's nothing on the other one and there's nothing for that to interfere with. So based on this initial evaluation here, I do believe this is a suitable replacement. So let's get this guy installed. It's gonna go in the same way it came out, right through that hole there. Just kind of just shove it on in there. There we go. Shaft coming in all the way back. Right there, stay. Here, I forgot to remember to put some grease on that seal. I don't wanna, I don't wanna forget that. It's good practice, you don't have to, but couldn't hurt. Let's get this guy in. Beginning seal insertion, or not seal, uh, axle, shaft. Shaft insertion, there we go. Axle shaft. Get in there. Oh. It's not going in. Why aren't you going in? Okay, impact driver. We know it's lined up, so let's back out of here and get some more muscle behind it. Coming down. Need to get to a more manageable working height. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here, since these axle shafts have a bit of a in play in their joint, like they'll slide back and forth, I'm going to try to use the axle itself to ram that thing in. There we go. I think I got it. Okay, so now we just need to get this uh, end of the axle back into the bearing and then get this knuckle back up here onto the strut. Come on up. They kind of fit at the same time. I've got to pick the unit up. Pry bar. I've got to pick the unit up to get it to align and then uh, I can get the bolts in. Simultaneously, the axle shaft splines will go in. So here we go, I'm pulling up on the pry bar, They're right down here. There's our bar, we'll pull that up, slide the end of this axle into the knuckle slash bearing, straighten that guy out. Now I'm holding on to the, uh, the pry bar with my leg here. And I just need to get these guys lined up. Come on now, get in there. Okay, the bolt's halfway in, almost all the way in. There we go. Oh, you guys didn't see. Nice Give that a push. Second bolt, that one's in. Okay, now this is the part that's gonna matter when it comes to that wheel alignment business. So what we will do here, we're gonna go with what we know. Now we know that this one can't move in and out, so let's get that one bolted on right now. Now the bottom one, that one has a little bit of motion to it, see that? So what we need to do is line up the witness marks on the bolt, and then uh, that's how we know the position that it's uh, supposed to be in. What size is that, 21? Yes, got it. So let's run these nuts down. Other way. That's actually 
pretty close. It's like right on with that bowl. Look at that. That's uh, that's perfect. It's sitting exactly where it needs to. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and run it down and lock it in. We'll do the top one first. And witness marks are still where they should be. I don't see anything sticking out. Yep, good. That's what we want. Okay, yeah, we're getting somewhere now, aren't we? Woohoo! Alrighty, next up, it's tie rod time. We just slip that guy back down in there. Oh, drop our castle nut on the floor because that's proper protocol. We must be tempting gravity at all times. Let's get that guy threaded on. Good. Couple forward impacts. And I need to line up the hole for the cotter pin, which I can see it. A little more. Nope, nope, right there. We're on it. Right there. Good. Okay, split pin coming in. We'll push it in that way so it looks pretty. Hold it down and around. And then around and around. That's very pretty. Hammer. Everything's a hammer. All right, washers coming in. New bolt, nut coming in. Pre clicks coming in. Now we got a chisel or a punch rather that's going to slip into the grooves in the rotor to hold that rotor and lock it in because now we're going with a torque wrench coming in. I usually don't really like to film this part because it's going to get kind of boring, I guess, but. A lot of people seem to think it doesn't happen, so this one's for you also. Actual click. Okay, so we may now put our little basket on there. Like so. I forget what it's actually called. I call it a basket. It's not really a basket. You get what I meant though. Hmm, how do I want to do this? This one can go around in the front here. Yeah. This one around the side here. Yeah. There. Stay. It was pretty, now it's horrible. There. Now we're good. Okay. Removing our punch. Now we can toss the wheel back on. Right. Hoist this guy up. Slide that thing in right there like. Get in there. Where's my studs? They're misaligned. Five lugs coming in. Now you remember there was two of these that were missing the cap. So it, it, it might just be me. Could just be a peeve but I won't put these two that are missing the cap next to each other. They're gonna go in opposing positions. I don't know why I feel the need to do that. Maybe it's like a, a balance thing or maybe I'm just weird. But I don't like to put the missing cap ones next to each other, I don't know. It is what it is. Anyway, let's get these torqued down. Come here, that's the 19. Another 19. We have the 18 on standby. And the 19 again. Awesome. Torque you later. All right, crash your van. Coming down. All the way down. Dodge van. Out of price, it says Dodge. Okay, I just saw the parts guy come in, and I believe that they brought the tail light assembly for uh, for this tail light. So it looks like we're gonna have some bonus feature action in this one. We're done with the axle, but let's move on to some electrical repair. Uh, we have no light function back here, 
And uh, that's kind of a problem because it's unlawful to not have any light function. Actually, before we pull it out, let's uh, let's prove that it does not work. I'm gonna hop into the cab and we'll operate the lights and you guys can see that this left rear has no activity. So as we saw, the left side is inoperative. So let's get our deck lid trunk thing open a little bit here. And let's pull this unit out for inspection. These are uh, very easy lights to replace. They're held into place with these little push clip tab devices right here. These little pins, it's a two piece pin. Kind of like a drywall anchor where when it goes in its hole, it's squeezed right here at the large and large part. And then when you push it in, it'll press out on that and it'll lock the thing into position. These can be a real bear to remove sometimes if they're full of dirt and sand and whatnot, but these ones here appear to be uh, no problem. So, we'll pull this unit out, and then it's just gonna slide out. There's a tab on the other side here that holds it in. And then we've got our connector. It's a single connector going into, uh, not a module per se, Get this thing on and connected here, I'll show you. Bear with me. There. It's not a module, it's more like a, a bus bar. And within that bus, we have our little socket pods for the lights. See that? So we've got our bulb, and looks like this is a two circuit bulb. And then the other is of a similar design. See that? Now these right here, these things can also fail. You get burnt spots. Uh, on the uh, little connectors there or corrosion and it won't make contact with the bulb. Additionally, you can also get corrosion inside of the socket and you'll lose connection with the bulb. But what we can see on this one is our little unit has some melting action. See that right there? Yeah, that whole thing is melted. That's from a bad connection. Bad connections are gonna draw extra current. It's gonna create heat or it's gonna arc and that arcing will uh, will fry the module, or uh, fry the circuitry rather. And that's exactly what we see happen here. All that broken away plastic, it's distorted here on the edge. The little connectors kind of melted away. So this unit is integral to the assembly. So we had to order a replacement assembly. Okay, new unit coming in. And believe it or not, O'Reilly's actually have this thing in stock down the street. Uh, before I put this in, we need to make sure that it has actual light bulbs inside of it. Sometimes they will come with a bulb and sometimes they don't. And then other times I end up breaking the thing trying to get it apart. It just doesn't want to come out. Mini pry bar. Get behind it. I couldn't get in there with that big prying device that I had. Maybe this is actually glued in when it shouldn't be, there we go. Yeah, yeah it was, look. There's some glue right there from when they built the thing. Anyway, came out without damage and it does have light bulbs in it. So that's good. It appears all we need to do now is plug this thing back into its connector. We'll back it up and then check for function. And then uh, this repair will be complete. Let's click that on. We slide our tab, this little tab right here in the side of the body. We're gonna go ahead and slide that thing into that thing. It kind of hinges over, and then our holes should be lining up. Yep. So we got one little pish, push pin clip. Pish pin. It's a pish pin. There we go. Okay, that one's on, that one's on. Let's go back, keep this thing on, and see if everything works. Time. Hup. All right, key on. Where's that key? I cannot reach. It fell out. Oh no, it fell. There it is. I dropped it on the floor. Hey, there's our oil pressure business. See that? Does it work? Yes. Yay, we have oil pressure. All right. Okay, left signal. Beautiful. Okay, let me go hit the brakes. You guys stay right here and tell me if the brakes go off, okay? 
Alright guys, I think we're good to go on this one. That's enough for the day. Uh, I do have to uh, replace the transmission pan gasket on this and a filter. Uh, I might save that for Troy tomorrow morning. I don't have the part for that thing yet. So that being said, uh, I have nothing more to offer in this particular video. So I will go ahead and close this one out right now. I'll do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. End of video. End of axle. End of doge. End of leaker. End of light bulb. End of transmission.